Okay, YouTube, uh, here we're going to go through how to tune a uh, uh, two axis gimbal or any gimbal really using simple VGC. This is using a, uh, an Aris two axis Zhao uh, Young gimbal um, with a Panasonic Lumix G3 on it. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect to that gimbal. Um, the settings here are clearly all over the place. Uh, the gimbal's rocking back and forth, it's out of control. What we want to do initially here is we're just going to zero out these values um, all along here. And it'll just kind of make sure that nothing is interfering with our tuning. We want to kind of do one of these things one at a time. We don't want to try and do, uh, do it all at once. And then we're going to set some arbitrary power values of, say, 50. And we're going to write those to the board. So, as you can see, immediately the uh, the gimbal settles down. New negativity alarm. Oh, okay there. there is. Um, and you can see that it's not reacting in any way to me moving it around. Uh, first things first, obviously you want to make sure that the gimbal is balanced. This one I've, I've spent quite a bit of time balancing it. I've, I put some lead weights on the one side of the uh, the roll axis, and the camera itself is actually almost perfectly balanced. This particular camera uh, on the pitch axis, which was nice. So now that we've got it all settled down, you want to make sure that your number of poles is correct on this gimbal. If uh, if you look at the motor, it is labeled 22 pole. Uh, I pulled one apart just to double check. Uh, there are in fact 22 poles in there. For some reason, sometimes the software for this gimbal, um, the board. The firmware already has set as uh, 24 poles. That's not correct, and it will it'll cause issues. But first, first, first things first, we're going to go and do an auto configuration on the motor. So it's going to try and figure out what it needs to do to hold that gimbal steady, and it's going to come up with some some values for it. So it's testing all the different axes right now: roll, pitch and it's trying to figure out exactly what it needs to do. Alright, now I see it. It's come back with power 50-50 and it's come up with the wrong number of poles. So we're going to go and change those poles to the correct number. Um, I'm not sure why it is very rarely successful at this. So we're going to write that to the to the board. Alright, now we've got that written. Um, the power, I think it's a little bit low, personally, if I can touch it and move it around that easily. So I'm going to try and crank those powers up uh, to 100. A uh, large gimbal like this, you're probably looking at near 100 anyways. So we're going to write that. Immediately you can see the gimbal is trying to hold its own a little bit better. Uh, still, I mean, it, it's pretty easy to knock it off axis, so I'm going to try and crank those up to 150. And yeah, pitch axis, it's definitely holding a bit better, so I'm going to go to 125 for that. Alright. Now they're holding much firmer there. <clears throat> so, first things first, we're going to do the P value, and we're just going to put that up to one, we're going to do one axis at a time, and uh, we're going to write that, and we're going to put uh, 0 0.01 into the I value. What this will do is it allows the, the gimbal to try and get back to its, its rightful home. So I'm just going to play with the I value here and show you what it does. So if we go up to 0.1 and write that, the I value is you don't want to go very high. Uh, usually 0.1 to 0.2 is as, as high as you really want to go. See now it's trying to get back a little bit faster, um, but it doesn't have the P required to get it back to center. So we're going to bring the P up to 10, uh, large gimbal like this, usually at least 10. So it's definitely getting closer, but you can see it's jiggling quite a bit. 
So I'm going to bring the D value up. I usually hold just a little bit higher than the P value for the D. And what that does is it prevents it from overshooting its center point. So right now things are coming back really slow to that center point, but it's not going to overshoot it. So we go like that, it goes back and it, it doesn't come back smoothly, but it goes back to center without too much overshot. Uh, looks like we might have to go a little bit higher on the D because it's jiggling a little bit on that overshot. So we're going we're gonna to write that D of 20. We're going to go back to our real-time data here now and see how it actually responds on the roll axis. So we push it off axis, it comes back, you can see on those graphs there's a little bit of overshot and back again. So let's, uh, let's up the D value a little bit more. 25. Go back to that real-time data. Well, it's a much quicker response back to home. And it appears to be doing a nice job of getting back to center without overshooting too much. Alright, uh, maybe we'll do just a little bit higher. So it's still a little overshot, which we don't really want. There, we're getting a really nice response now. It's not really going back too far. And feeling this as it's sitting there by itself seems very, very, very comfortable with where is that. I gotta move these cables here so they don't hook on it at a later date. Alright, so now let's go back. These settings here seem to be fairly comfortable. Now let's try and do the pitch again. We'll put that to 1, 0 0.01, and let's put this at uh, 3 because we know we're gonna have to put something. So we're gonna write that. Alright. So we'll go back to the real-time data. See a nice and smooth line if I push it off axis. Oops. Slow response back. You can see it's coming back just a little bit too slow. So we're going to go back and we're going to try and up that I value, which is how fast it can go back, to 0 0.08. We're not going to go quite to 0 0.1 yet. So we're going to real-time data. There, it's coming back much faster. But you can see there's a little bit of oscillation on the way back, which is going to give us a little bit of image jello. We don't want that. So we're going to try and up the I value a little bit more. And we might give it just a bit more P to, to give it a little bit more oomph getting back there, especially if it's dealing with wind or, or whatnot. There we go. So, oh, coming back really nice now. You can see it's coming in and slowing down as it gets to that. Point, but there's not as much oscillation there. Let's try a little bit higher on the D. What's this written? We'll go back real time data. Oh, that looks pretty nice actually. Not a lot of vibrations while it's sitting there, which is good. And. Yeah, it looks like that's a place to start with anyways.